and the action packed bomber all gun smoke. one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a state marshal and the smell of gun smoke. my story. Me, Matt Morgan, U.S. Marshal. I'm the first man they look for, the last they want to meet. And you get it where a man isn't looking. Stumbles on another he don't want to look at. The fans the breeze straight for me. <laughs> Double talk? Well, it's what happens to a sudbuster by the name of Beckhouse. This Beckhouse is riding into Dodge along the three miles. So it's early morning, the sun's warm on his back. Warm and soothing, he says later. That's why he's not paying any attention to where his bronc's looking. The bronc looks, props, and Beckhouse takes a tumble. Uh, you, you pesky, flea-bitten critter. What for you want to go toss a man like that? I, I ain't gonna let you go till you, till you stop playing and acting up like you are gone old fired local. And you, you want me to kick some hot sense into you? Or don't you class yourself no hot? What in the whole fire tarnation's wrong with you? Say. For the first time, this big house looks towards the side of the trail, looks at a small depression. What he sees isn't pretty. When hombres, lower abiding hombres like big house, see this kind of thing that isn't pretty, they all head for the same place. Stabbing. 
seven times the knife went in. Second one, there, being the fatal wound, cut artery. Meaning he, uh, he must have bled a lot. Yeah, a little, a little, if my examination is conclusive. Uh, by that, I mean, if he died from the second stab wound, uh, then it was fairly fast. Therefore, not very much blood. But enough to show up. You mean uh, in the ground, the dust? Uh, is that what you mean? Uh-huh. Mm, enough. Well, that means he wasn't killed where we found him. He was killed someplace else, taken out the three mile and dumped. Yeah, could be. Could very well be. And uh, judging from the lack of fluids collected, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Died from the stab serving the artery. Therefore, he. Uh, mm, yeah. More than enough. Well, there's not much of a chance of picking up any tracks out there. I had a good look around. Nothing to go on. Uh, you note this man's hands, Marshal. Uh, their condition. They're wide and soft. No calluses. Mm. Therefore, I would say this man had been a gambler. You found nothing by which to make identification? No, nothing. Uh, nor did I, nor did I. Interesting. Well, you can do but one thing. Invite the populace to view the remains. Perhaps uh, someone, a man, a woman. I do that. I spread the word around Dodge that the duck has a body the law once identified. <laughs> Dodge City folk, the fact that an identification is one of means mystery. Mystery killing to them is a free show, a kind of one-man circus. So every man, woman, and kid turns up to file past the victim. Nobody identifies the remains. Comes the next day, and I have a visitor. His name is Jessup. We'll leave it at that. Yeah? That body over at the dock. So? While it was living, it had a name. And you know it? I do. Let's have it. A strange one. That's why I remember. Arcade Grant. Art. You haven't got it around the wrong way. Asked him the same myself when I first heard it. No, that's the right way. Arcade Grant. Hey, uh, Jessup. Uh -huh. What do you do? Oh, you've been uh, looking at my hands, Marshal. Professional with cards or dice? Well, I prefer cards, but I have nothing against the dice. Provided it isn't loaded. When you played with Arcade Grant, which did you use? Did I say I'd play? Cards or the dice? Neither. I didn't like the way Grant was acting up, flashing a big roll of notes about it. It was not only unethical, but disposable, foolish, and dangerous, as it obviously turned out. How many people do you figure knew he was carrying so much? You know Ma Hyacinth's boarding house? One of the places I'd like to close up. <laughs> well, no man would be stupid enough to cheat at cards or dice, not with Ma Hyacinth around. You stay in there? I was. Figure I'll move on over to Wichita. When I say so, Jessup. Marshal, does that mean I'm under suspicion? This means I'd like to have you around for a while, that's all. You can leave Dodge some other time. Mm-hmm. And if I claim my rights as a free citizen? I'll toss you into Huska on the charge of attempting to obstruct the law. Well, in that case, I'll see if Ma Hyacinth can let me have my room back. If I'm wanted, you'll... Uh, I walk go around to my house in Corden House with Jessup. It's a one-story clapboard building in the toughest section of Dodge. Room and house, which provides not only board and eats, but also liquor and gambling facilities. Jessup gets his room, then I get my house in full attention. So you got nothing on me, Morgan, so beat it. And take your bed someplace else. We're all set customers. Sit down, Ma. In my own place, you're telling me to sit down. In my own place, it's... Yes. No. <laughs> my, my, ain't the Lord busy these days, walking around telling gentle ladies what to do. Ma, yesterday, why didn't you take a walk? Like here. Where to, youngster? Like around a doc's place. <laughs> ain't got no time for docs. When I'm sick, I use the same liniments as my poor mother used on my poor patty. Like around the doc's place to identify one of your customers? That's Morgan. What are you aiming at, huh? But I'm always aiming at when there's a killing. Say, yeah, I've been a kissing. Maybe you don't know anything that goes on within 50 miles of Dodge. <laughs> oh, flattery ain't to get you nowhere, Matt, my boy. Where do you get the roll from, Ma? You're talking to me. About one of your customers, one of your late customers? 
Somebody with a big role and a strange name, Arcade Grant. Late did you claim this morning, sir? These last two days. How come you didn't join the queue yesterday? Oh, my romantic show. That's not something. Yeah. Uh, did you say, uh, Arcade Grant? Who killed him, Bob? So, hmm. Better than huh? More? Killer took his son and dumped him the body. Carried it out the far end of three miles. In notion why? Carried it out there? Uh-huh. Figured it was because he didn't want the body found too soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, where do you figure this uh, killing took place? Uh, original. Anyone, any rumor been scrubbing the floor these last few days? My thoughts were always kicking. The blood? Is there anything you care to name? Ma, tell me. This arcade grand got himself stabbed to death. And... Yeah, hold it, Morgan, hold it. You say stabbed? It was with a knife. Uh-huh. And a throat seven times. Seven? Does it mean anything? Sure. What? A lot of stabs. This arcade grant got himself stabbed to death in this building, you'd know it. Well, if I'm around, it's super. I ain't around. No. If this arcade grant won a roll too big to jump over, you'd know it? He didn't win no roll in this place. How can you be sure? On account of, uh, I get 10% kick in on all and everything. All right, Ma. You know everything. Suppose you'd tell me about that shooting. goes on here in my Hyacinth board and gambling house that she doesn't know. That's why when the three shots blast the air, I ask what I do before jumping for the door. Yeah, I know nothing about him. It takes me but a split second to reach the door. The corridor runs both ways, a corridor lined with closed doors, and the only things moving are the curtains down the end of the passage. Uh, Marshal, Marshal, I, I figure that the ship will come from down at end. One of these rooms? Yeah, well, maybe. Let, let's try them. Any luck? Well, I'll get a pass key. Uh, uh, as usual, this time of day, there ain't nobody using their rooms here, either in the big card room or in the bar or out someplace. Locked, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's puzzling. Make with a pass key, Ma. A pass key? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I've uh, got it in a string around my neck. Uh, uh, now, then, you look the other way while I, while I pull it out. Uh, all right, uh, you can turn back. Come on, come on. Well, I can do the best I can. So. Well, uh, there's one thing I'll say for him. He uh, paid his rent in advance. Whoever got him fired from outside. Yeah, well, that's what an hombre gets for keeping the window open. Jessup had this room before, didn't he? You was here when I gives you back to him today. Did he tell people he'd intended leaving, Dad? Marshal Morgan. There's some things I know and some things I don't. Mm. Hi, Mom. Uh, hi, Rocky. Hi. Stick around, Rocky. Huh? Who's your new boyfriend, Ma? He ain't got no boyfriend. Then who's your pard? I don't like Where him. have you come from? Who wants to know? Marshal Morgan. You Marshal Morgan? Asking you where you come from. You, uh, uh... You mean where do I come from, meaning where I was born? The last three minutes will do, Rocky. Oh. From down the road. Anything against that? Hand me your guns. Hey, what gives on around here, Ma? Why is the law boss in the place? Yeah, they do what he wants, Rocky. There's uh, mean green in his eye. All right. Thanks. Okay, you can host them. Thanks, I'm sure. Whereabouts down the road? Uh, well, I figure that's my private business, lawman. Uh-uh. Not anymore. Uh, then, uh... I'd rather not say. Yeah, uh, Rocky, uh, Jessup's hmm? just got yourself shot. Jessup? Yeah. Too bad. How far down the road? Uh, now, 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 look, Ma. I swear it's the first time I played down there. Preferring, as you know, this place, but... Well, I, I, I was at the roulette. Kaufman's roulette. 
Oh, uh, we'll go into that later. Well, I didn't win nothing. So there ain't no 10% for you. You come straight from Kaufman's to here? Well, go check on it, lawman. I'm in the clear, so just go check on it. I ain't the only hombre around this place, lawman. Yeah, well, I... <clears throat> I don't know about that clear off here. One of them hotheads, you know, uh, gets himself in the morning a couple of fights. Known to use a knife? Mr. Matt, Marshal Morgan. I guess he's done enough talk today with you. So long. Uh, get your own way out. Well, as it sometimes happens with these kind of killings, nobody knows nothing. Everybody knows everything. Which is why I find myself getting the local printer to run off a pile of wanted dodges for me. Offering $100 reward for information on either the Grant or Jessup killing, or both. I have them plastered up all over the city. I make investigations, get no place. Then I have a visitor, one Rocky. And uh, so I figured, Marshal, that you should know about him. About this hombre Lennox and the critter smile. Both flashing a lot of money around, huh? Well, I've seen him for a long time, but never they got so much on him at the one time. I see. Did they, uh, they know either of the dead men? Well, why don't you ask him? Ain't I done enough coming to the law already? Oh, sure, sure, thanks. Yeah, well, um, well, I guess that's all, Marshal. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> don't let Ma know I've been here, will you, huh? No, I won't. Uh, of course, if you do, or, or she finds out, she'll want 10% of the $100 reward. Well, let's worry about that if and when you collect it. Huh? Oh, are you sure? That's all right. Well, um, well, so long, Marshal. I'm I let the cow punch you go. I trip myself, not for a drink, but towards Ma Hazen's place. I find her in. That's where I'm likely to come up against Lennox and Smythe. Well, she's in one of her moods. Yeah. It's found in a location, folks. Ain't it part of your duty as a lawman, Mr. Marshal Borden, boy? Watch yourself tonight, Ma. I'm in the same mood as yourself. Nothing is funny. I need cheering up. One of the things that would do that is to close this place. Now, you get it? Yeah. Well, uh, Lennox, he's still out. Um, that's my bank. Room number 11, along there. Yeah, don't go tell him I said so. I walk quietly along the dim corridor. Tread the floor close to the wall to stop any board from creaking. Number 11 is near where the corridor makes a turn. Door isn't locked. Say, what? I'll reach for your guns, my. What's that? The law. Sit down. The law, huh? Oh, yeah, I recognize you now with the lamp shining on your face. All right. The law says sit down, I sit down. So now what's the law say, Marshal? Where'd you get the roll you've been flashing around? <laughs> my, my, ain't the law nosy. <laughs> No, I won't like it if you bust one of the chairs. Now pick it up and sit up, huh? Sure. Uh, like I wish some... All right, all right, all right. Forget it, Marshal. You've forgotten what I asked? I, uh... I got the money from Lennox. You know Lennox? A cowpuncher like me. For the past, uh... 12 months or so, I, I've been loaning him money. I knew well he paid it back. That's, that's all. All at once? Yeah, yeah, all at once. Someone died and leave him a small fortune. Huh. What I know? Where'd he get it from? Uh, look at it. Yeah, you got Marshal? Mm-hmm. Lennox. Lady Critter. Never bothers to walk around the place and in along the corridor. Gets in through his window instead. What number? Two doors down. This side. Again, I self-footed along the corridor, reach the door, test the handle, find it turns easy. And I give it a little shove. It opens quietly. Man inside the room is his back to me. He senses he's no longer alone. Spins around, a hand grabbing for his gun. Leave it, leave it! What the police? Take it easy. Marshal Morgan, ain't it? Sit down, Lennox. I don't know nothing about nothing. Not even where you got all your money from? Even the money you paid Smythe? Ever heard of a game of cards, tall poker? Sure. You're riding the wrong trail, Marshal. I know what's on your mind. I read them dodges of yours plastered up. 
But like I say, I don't know nothing about nothing. But you're telling me who you played poker with, aren't you, Lennox? Who lost so much money to you? Ain't nothing in the law books to say I got to. You want to tell me the hard way, maybe? All right. All right, Marshal. I'll tell you. Well, you don't figure it's going to mean A man it's calling now. himself Lennox tells me he got involved in a poker game with a beef fire on his way through Dodge to the cattle sales of Colorado. Says he had a big run of luck. Skins his beef fire with every cent he's got and can raise some credit. The name of the buyer? Oh, oh. Lennox can't remember. But he's written it down someplace. What's happened to the slip of paper? <laughs> well, that's impossible to say. Well, now, I'll leave him looking. Tell him the moment he locates it, he's to bring it around the law office. Sure, Marshal, sure, I'll do that. Only wish I could recollect the name. Who else, madam? No one that I know of. Did he check in here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess he did. Yeah, I guess he did check in. I walked from place. Lennox's room, walked down the corridor. Almost to where it leads out in the fresh air, but as I'm passing Ma Hyacinth's room... Hey, Marshal. Yeah? Inside. You uh, want to pay out the amount of $100 reward? Provided I'm given information leading to the arrest of whoever killed Grant, Jessup. Uh, well, listen, listen. Uh... You figure it the same as I do, that Grant was killed for his money, and uh, just upon account of that, he talked with the law. Plenty of talks with me about the Grant business is still on top of the ground. Yeah, yeah, but only one identified Grant. So, as that's something the killer didn't want so early, he pops them three sons into Jesse. Oh, well, maybe. When do I get the hundred dollars? When I make the arrest. Oh, well, I guess I can trust you, Matt Morgan. Uh, now, look, uh, when you was talking with Lennox, you know what I was doing? Listening. And a good job I was on account of that Lennox filled you right up here with a supplies. About the cattle buyer? Listen, this critter Lennox, he tells you he reads them wanted dodges, right? Sure. Yeah. And then he tells you next that he wrote down the name of the cattle buyer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I say. Lennox is an old fired plumb liar. How? Oh. How? On account that coyote can't write and can't read. Let's do it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Nicest bit of gunplay I've seen in years, Marshal. Thanks, Father. Yes, sir. So nice, I figure it's worth uh, paying for. How would you like 10% of my reward, huh? again next week as Matt Morgan fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West End, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is written by Ronald Ingleby and produced by Jim Bradley for Art Ferndale.